Here in the U.S., we've come to view home ownership as a fundamental right, part of the American dream. But elsewhere around the world, over a billion people live in homes they have zero legal right to, with no protection against eviction, no access to basic services like safe drinking water, electric, and sanitation, and no opportunity to improve their home environment, build equity, and save that nest egg should they need it one day. Owning a home is still part of the American dream. I think it represents financial stability. Uh, I think it represents family stability. The difference between a nation that supports home ownership and one that doesn't is a game changer for its citizens. Most of the American dream is about home ownership. And it's having a part of the economy and having a part of the investment in the society. So how do different countries support home ownership? Housing markets and government policies differ on many levels. Factors like the physical characteristics of homes, social customs, geography, the way data is collected, and demographics all interact with politics. But some of the more important common denominators include a country's policies when it comes to housing finance, property rights, and taxes. For example, here in the U.S., thanks to FHA, first-time buyers can become a homeowner with a lower credit score and a mere down payment. In China, for example, a 30% down payment is needed, and in other countries, even more. FHA allows uh, for the 30-year mortgage, which is uh, something that is, is very important for uh, stability in the housing market and the consumer's ability to, uh, to obtain the mortgage. Uh, it allows for a lower down payment. Without FHA in the, uh, in the picture, the 30-year mortgage would go away. You would see uh, banks would most likely require at least 20% down. And unfortunately, the way that consumers are uh, saving now, uh, that would take uh, decades for them to, to save. We have laws and systems that limit how much interest banks can charge us. But in South Africa, borrowers can pay as much as 32% interest. In countries where financing isn't available at all, particularly to the poor, some folks build their homes room by room over many years. And in nations with well-functioning housing financing systems, homes can be leveraged to obtain credit, improve living conditions, or even a finance a small business, which helps the entire economy grow. In parts of Europe, there was once a landed aristocracy, where individuals weren't even allowed to own their own homes. It's been my experience that the people who own their own home are better citizens. A person that owns their home is invested in the neighborhood. They're more likely to take a greater interest in what's happening in their children's schools, uh, a greater interest in what's happening in the community. Part of the lore of North America and the New World was the promise of free land. Here in the U.S., our procedures for ensuring title to homes is well vetted and property ownership is not restricted by class or gender or similar criteria. While this is now true in most developed nations, there are still many places around the world where women, in particular, are denied the right to own land. Those cultures favor inheritance by distant male relatives over widows and closer female heirs. When it comes to taxes, U.S. homeowners are encouraged by policies like the mortgage interest deduction, capital gains exemption, and 1031 exchange rules. In general, the EU countries don't collect capital gains tax on the sale of an owner-occupied home, and some have the mortgage interest deduction, but in one case, where a country reduced the mortgage interest deduction, the result was a 10 to 15% decline in home prices and a 25% drop in construction. Other nations like Canada have encouraged home ownership with a variety of tax policies, including first-time buyer credits and rebates on home purchases, construction, and renovation costs. For these and other reasons, home ownership rates vary dramatically from one country to another. Here in the U.S., we rank 31st out of the top 41 nations when it comes to home ownership rates. Those nations on the lower end of the scale tend to invest a lot more tax dollars in public housing, which is also open to a much wider range of people, including middle-income earners, than here in the U.S., where we really invest a lot less money in public housing and only open it to a much smaller group of lower-income earners. Tell us what you think about the role of home ownership here in the U.S. and around the world by sending an email to asktheexpert at sherryolifson.com.